Old Grognard says, let's look at how psionic strength points work in 2nd edition AD&D. Today we're going to look at psionic strength points, or PSPs for short. The only reference I'm using for this video is the complete psionics handbook, so the rules from skills and powers or other later revisions aren't covered here. This video is organized into four sections, each answering a question, and those questions are what are psionic strength points? How do we figure out how many PSPs a character has? What are the rules for using them? And how do characters recover PSPs once they've been used? Let's start by answering the question, what are psionic strength points? And the short answer is that they're the magic points or mana of psionics, although they aren't magical in nature. For those of you who are familiar with psionics from first edition, the thing where there are attack, defense, and generic PSP pools is no longer in play, so in second edition there's just one big PSP pool. Next, let's answer how do we figure out how many PSPs a character has, and this depends on if they're a psionicist or if they have a wild talent. If the character is a psionicist, we consult Table 5 on page 13 of the Complete Psionics Handbook. With this, we can figure the character's inherent potential, which is a fancy term for how many PSPs a psionicist has at first level. We do this by first finding the character's wisdom score over here on the left, and then getting our base score from this column over here. So if the character has a 15 wisdom, their base is 20. 16 is 22, 17 is 24, etc. We then plug in their constitution and intelligence, but this time we use the column on the right and add whatever that is to the number we got earlier. And that's how many PSPs a character has at first level. This is the example from the book. Rowena's ability scores are Wisdom 17, Con 16, and Intelligence 12. Her inherent potential is 25. 24 points for her wisdom score, with a plus one modifier for her constitution score. At first level, she has 25 PSPs. When a psionicist gains a level, they get more PSPs. How we figure this is that we go back to table five, and the character gains PSPs equal to the ability modifier for their wisdom score, plus 10. This is the example from the book. Rowena has just advanced to a new level. Her wisdom is 17. According to Table 5, the modifier for this score is plus 2. Rowena can add 12 PSPs, which is 2 plus 10, to her total pool. That's how the psionicist works, but what about a character with a wild talent or talents? If a character gains a wild talent, they have enough PSPs to use the power or powers once. If the power is one of those that can be maintained, add four times the maintenance cost to their initial PSP pool. For example, if the character gains all-round vision as their wild talent, they would have 22 PSPs. We know this because the initial cost is six, so we'd get six PSPs from that, and four times the maintenance cost of four would be 16. So we'd add that to the six we got earlier, and we'd have 22 PSPs. If the character has more than one wild talent, do this for each power. This is more common than the wild talent table would suggest, since if a character gains a wild talent that has a prerequisite, they get the prerequisite as well. An example would be if the character got ballistic attack as their wild talent. If we look at ballistic attack, it has telekinesis as a prerequisite, so the character would get telekinesis as well. In this case, the character would begin with 12 PSPs. They would get 5 from Ballistic Attack, since its activation cost is 5 and it doesn't have a maintenance cost, and then 7 from Telekinesis, because it has an activation cost minimum of 3 and a minimum of 1 per round to maintain. Regardless of which wild talents a character has or how many they have, whenever they gain a level, they gain 4 PSPs. This isn't retroactive, so if a character got their wild talent at level 4, they wouldn't get extra PSPs for their previous levels, but 
their pool would increase by 4 once they reached level 5. Now that we know how to figure out how many PSPs a character has, what are the rules for using them? To explain the general rules for this, we'll use the all round vision power from earlier. When the player decides to use the power, they roll a power check on a d20. If the check is successful, they spend the initial cost to activate the power, in this case 6 PSPs. If the check failed, then it would cost half the initial cost rounded up, in this case 3 PSPs. If the power is to be kept active after the first round, this is assuming the check was successful, this could be done automatically and would cost 4 PSPs per round. This could go on until the character is unconscious, decides to turn the power off voluntarily, or runs out of PSPs. Speaking of running out of PSPs, how do characters recover PSPs once they've been used? The first requirement for a character regain spent PSPs is that they don't expend PSPs. Then, for each hour they don't expend any PSPs, we consult Table 6 on page 14. The rates vary from none for a character doing hard exertion up here at the top, to 12 per hour if the character is sleeping or using the rejuvenation proficiency. These numbers in parentheses are for if the DM is using the optional rule where characters regain PSPs by the turn rather than by the hour. The PSPs regained work out to be the same in the long run, but the rates in parentheses are in 10 minute chunks instead of being listed in hours. This is a little harder to track, but the benefit to the players is that once they stop using PSPs and rest, they begin regaining PSPs after 10 minutes instead of having to wait for an entire hour. Okay, now it's time for the list of page numbers at the end of the video, and I'll take this time to uh, say some stuff. First, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I really appreciate it and really enjoy that every now and then someone actually learns something from one of these videos. I'd also like to thank Scrat over at A Squirrel Plays for the shout outs and mentions. I really appreciate it and please, if you haven't already, go check out his channel. If you can't think of anything to say, just leave a comment that old Grognard sent you. Other than that, I think the deluge of crap that was taking up my time has subsided a bit, so I'm going to try to upload a new video on the 1st and 15th of every month. We'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. And with that, it's outro time. Thanks for watching. Old Dognard, who probably has psionic powers but pretends he doesn't, and I would like to wish you a wonderful rest of your day.